Hi, I'm Heather. And I'm Dylan. And you are listening to Mountain Murders Offbeat, our weekly mini show. How you doing today, Dylan? I'm doing pretty good. How are you? Well, you know, it's a rainy midday week, uh, weekday, and just trying to get through it, slogging on through till the weekend. Man, it's all cold and dreary. You know, May is such an interesting time of year if you live here in the mountains. It's so unpredictable. You might have an 80 degree day and then the very next day will be like 40 degrees and all of your mater plants get killed. Oh, not the mater plants. (laughs) (laughs) It's just so unpredictable. It's crazy how much it fluctuates. It really does. But uh, yeah, rainy day. We're just uh, just chilling a little bit, trying to make it through. Oh, we have such a great subject matter today. We do. Before we get started, I want to give a big thanks to Kate. She actually uh, donated some funds via Venmo to help with the podcast. So thanks, Kate. Dang, Kate. Thank you. Dylan's looking surprised because I didn't tell him. Yeah, yeah. Well, I just, thanks for exposing the fact that my wife's hiding money, Kate. Yeah, well, you know, I just yeah. assume that you're going to want to borrow it to buy some beer. And oh. I'm not going to fund your bad habits. No, my beer fund is good. It's solid. It's the one thing's protected from this economy. It is your beer fund. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm drinking less beer. Just so you guys know. you got to give me credit. Uh, Dylan is not allowed to spend any of the podcast money on beer. No, On no. a rare occasion, I will let him go out and celebrate, like if we have a great download month, if we break a record as far as downloads go, or we hit a milestone, I'll buy him a drink, but I hoard the Mountain Murders podcasting fund for important things and not allow Dylan to spend it on beer. Well, no, it's not for beer and cigarettes. No, you have to go make your own money for that. Yeah, I have to get my own money to waste on that. Exactly. No, but uh, we really do appreciate that, Kate, and we appreciate our patrons, and we appreciate everyone that listens. We do, and you've been doing some setting and looking today. Yeah, I was setting and looking earlier on the porch. When some Jen- of our Discord folks were wondering if you've been doing some setting and looking. Jenny pointed out that um, I'm good at setting and looking. You so, are. Yeah, I, I feel I'm pretty. it's a pretty strong ability that I, that I have because we've done it in different locales lately. Just sit and look. Can I just say I'm envious of your ability to just sit and look because my brain never shuts off and it's always going in like a million directions and I'm always thinking about something, trying to problem solve or come up with some creative endeavor or whatever. Like my brain's just everywhere and you just sit and look and I'll be like, hey, what are you thinking about? And you're like, nothing. Well, see, I do just have nothing. Um, just my br- sitting and looking. No, I must say my brain does what you're describing. But it does it at certain times, like when I lay down to go to sleep and there's no distractions and, you know, or, you know, you know me, I get worked up on something, can't stop thinking about it. Like if the car is making a funny noise or stuff like that. Yeah, I know. Dylan will like obsess over something like that car is making this noise and he'll worry himself to death about it. But and then I'll be like, well, why don't you do something about it? And you're like, oh, I don't know about that. (laughs) That's a, procrastination is connected to ADHD. Dude, you are such a procrastinator. Well, I have like ADD too, and I don't procrastinate all the time. We all react different. But no, my brain does do that. But my brain also sometimes just shuts off and I can gaze off, you know, wistfully into do the distance. Do you know what I would give if I could just shut my brain off Baby. for like five minutes? Yeah. That's why, you know, I mean, I've never really been one a proponent of, like, illegal substances. But that is why cannabis needs to be legalized. Because, honestly, that is the only time that my brain will kind of be normal. Or what I've heard is a normal brain. Right. And that's the only time that my brain can, like, rest. When you have some gummies. Yeah. Yeah, I know. Which is rare. I know we gotta need to make a run to a friendly state, man. I need to just take a vacation to a friendly state for like the next year. Oh my god! I just wish I could shut my brain off a little bit. Well, we I'm are sure we have some listeners out there who understand, probably feel the same way. It's I don't know, man. Just got this really overactive brain. Never yeah, stops. it's a it's a it can be emotionally tiring. It's honestly. exhausting, and then on top of it, I have insomnia because yep. my brain just is always in like high gear. 
Yeah, so, so poor thing. So anybody in a friendly state, you know, will, will DM us. <laughs> Let's <laughs> commit goofy. mail fraud together. Well, today, Dylan, we're actually going to talk about something that I hold dear to my heart, and it's a conversation that I enjoy uh, discussing or, like, having with people, and that is some of our um, colloquial language, some Southern and Appalachian phrases, well, that's a big word, colloquialism. Well, I think uh, when you look at the linguistics in Appalachia, it's really interesting. And our region is often mocked or, you know, we're kind of made fun of because of the way we speak or our accents, our dialogue. But, you know, it really has a unique history because Southern Mountaineers are the conservators of old, early Elizabeth, Elizabethan English in the New World. Yeah, yeah, I think I mean, a lot of people don't realize the fact that some of these strange phrases or, you know, words or the way they're, uh, way the sentence is put together really does have a connection to Old English. It does. There are like four million mountaineers of the South from West Virginia all the way down to northern Alabama who embody perhaps the purest Old English blood to be found among English speaking peoples. Wow. Because we've been so isolated from the outside world for so many generations. Uh, of course, we've got the natural barriers of the mountains. And so for more than two centuries, we have preserved much of the language of Elizabethan England. Yeah, I mean, we we talk about it all the time. Could you imagine traveling through and around this region before the roads got, uh, and, and that really didn't happen, I would think, until the, what, 40s 50s when they started getting asphalted roads into this area so yeah it really made it hard for people these communities to interact with communities outside of uh, the region now some people would say that this is kind of a myth as our language in Appalachia isn't like frozen in time and that it does evolve as it does everywhere and I would say to an extent that is true and of course with the influx, the migration of people moving into our areas, because now people want to live in the mountains, people want to live in this, you know, be surrounded by this beauty, and people are moving in, and of course they're bringing their language, their customs, their culture with them, and, you know, we have more exposure to the world, internet, TV, whatever. So our language does evolve a bit, but we still have some of those old-timey, um, the speech, the vocabulary, uh, Southern phrases, Appalachian phrases that are prevalent. Yeah, I think what it really goes back to is um, decades and decades ago when we this area still was isolated, they kind of held on to these old ways longer than the rest of the people in the country. Well, I think what's really interesting when you examine Appalachian accents is that they are different from what you would consider the standard English accent. We have a tendency to put um, like the ER on the end of words. So you might get instead of like that's you, somebody lives up the hollow, they live up the holler. Yep. Um, instead of like a window, we might say that's a winder. Instead of yellow, it's yeller. A potato, tater, um, so like soda pop might be called sody pop. <laughs> yeah. And if you were talking about like China, I've heard old timers say Chaney or like <laughs> Chiny. <laughs> Yeah, but see, though those are funny and cute, and and it always makes me laugh because I'm Southern in country, obviously, but uh, I come across people who are what I would call super country. You know, they got that very slow drawl, you know, and it tends to be passed from, you know, parents to children, and you just hit these lines of people. It's almost like a glimpse into the past, the way they talk. Well, it totally is. And I think it's one of the things, one of the ways that Appalachian communities show their solidarity and belonging is like holding on to some of this language because it is so unique. And if you think about it, it's almost like a quilt where you have these threads and patches and pieces that are kind of come together. Oh, wow. And, Baby. and construct this whole like unique language. I don't know. That's a good metaphor. I, I love think it. that's right. And actually, guys, I will post a link. There's a really wonderful documentary that was made locally and features some folks that I actually know, like my fourth grade teacher, are on this documentary, and they discuss some of the um, Appalachian linguistics and culture and why we speak the way that we do. And it's on YouTube, and I'll find that link, and I'll post it so you guys can go check it out if you want to, because it's really fascinating. 
Okay, so uh, where are we going to go from here? Well, we're going to get started. So what I thought we would do today, Dylan, is put out an episode where we help you folks that y- y'all ain't from here uh, understand Southern and Appalachian phrases so that you can navigate the mountains or the South if you come, if you come for a visit, maybe you want to have a set and look. You can understand what people are trying are we, to say. Did we make that one up? I don't know. Setting and looking. Setting and looking's probably been done for. It's some been time. around. It's been around. So let's talk about some of these southern phrases, Dylan. I think first of all, y'all. Y'all. It's I, a I, compound word. Yep. Of you and all. Yes, it means all of you. You or, all. Or you all. Now there's variations of this. I've been exposed to youenses. Youns. 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 And um, that, that can comes more from the maybe Tennessee area. New Orleans. <laughs> but if uh, I think this is one that's rather famous and people know of it, uh, you know, nationwide. But it obviously means all of you. And it's typically um, it's used in anger and uh, in happiness. And it's just thrown around. It's just a universal word. Yeah. Y'all better get from down here. Now, Southerners do enjoy speaking in metaphors, hyperbole, similes. So you're going to see a lot of that in our culture, in our language. Bless your heart, Dylan. What does that mean to you? Now, that is a very popular phrase. And I think more people have latched onto the idea of what that actually means. But when I hear bless your heart, that usually translates to you're a fucking idiot. Well, it means it does basically mean that um, I'm I'm saying that you're you're slow, or you're um you you got some kind of a you don't live up to my expectations. <laughs> you got some heart. kind of issue that you can't overcome, or you're not overcoming. And people typically will do that out of politeness. Oh yeah, because Southerners will insult you to your face with a gigantic smile. Bless her heart, and it is really hard. For people not from here to, to I guess, know that they have just been insulted because we are so hospitable and sweet when we do it. Well, I mean, you could have someone telling this big story about their their daughter coming in, stealing money and, and messing everything up and, and doing drugs and taking the car and all this. And, and, and the person receiving this story could just end it with, bless her heart. And that's well, it. Yeah, and I say it mostly translates to you're a fucking idiot, but it can also have some like sympathetic or empathetic connotations. Like, yes. bless your heart that that happened to you. Like, yes. I'm sorry. But I would say most of the time when somebody says, oh, bless your heart, they're probably looking at you thinking, like, you are a dumbass. <laughs> you got a case of the dumbass. It's quite possible. How about, I reckon? Now, that means, like, I suppose, I imagine so. I reckon. I reckon Dylan is good at setting and looking. <laughs> no, that's exactly what it means. And if you hear if someone throws I reckon out, it means they're they're in agreement or um, they're trying to see where you're coming from. Now, I've heard this put a couple of ways. And we actually had a couple of folks uh, reach out via social media because I did ask, I think, on Facebook, hey, what are some of your favorite Southern phrases? And we got a uh, a couple people say, if the creek don't rise. Now, I've heard it, if the Lord's willing and the creek don't rise. But some people just say, if the creek don't rise. And what does that mean, Heather? It means doing our best to keep our word. So unless some uncontrollable circumstance occurs, we will be there. So if you say, hey, I'm a, you know, I want you to come over for dinner, can you do that? And you'll be like, well, if the creek don't rise, I'll, you know, so that just means like I'll be there unless, you know, I get hit by a beer truck on the way. Yeah, and, and, uh, and this is saying, this phrase is a perfect example of this was literal. This it was, was a, literal. This was a literal thing because you had all these paths and roadways that didn't have culverts and things and proper drainage and so around them. So people were walking. They were going via horseback. Yes, and so literally, if the creek rises and, and parts of the road are flooded, I won't make it. The path's going to be washed out, washed out. You can't make it there. <laughs> can't be washed out. Finer than frog hair, Dylan. No, I, I, I like this. Will you use this in a sentence for us? Oh, this is tricky. This is tricky. Because I've seen it, it described as, a, as a saying, you're finer than a frog hair, like you're looking good, or you've got yourself together. Because a, a frog hair is very, very fine, apparently. I I've never rubbed... Of, I don't even think a frog's got hair, does it? <laughs> I've, yes, apparently they do, but it's very fine. And so, and um, I've also... 
heard it used to describe something very small in, in the same in same respect. So I'm not sure on that one. Yeah. I've, yeah, heard, I've actually heard my hair, my actual hair that like grows on my head be described as like, gosh, girl, your hair's it's finer than frog hair. Because I do have like baby fine. Right. Like super baby fine hair. I think that's a good example. It really is. So don't amount to a hill of beans. Now, uh, some people claim this was a literal, a literal uh, unit of measurement here in uh, in the Appalachian areas. And uh, it means that is you're making it. A mountain out of a molehill, or you're making it. Um, well, I've heard that it means like worthless. Worthless. So yes. that don't amount to a hill of beans because I guess a hill of beans isn't really worth a lot of money. So when you say that, you're basically saying, "Oh, well, that's worthless." <laughs> amount don't amount to a hill of beans. Yeah, I've heard people use that phrase to describe other people, like that nephew of mine. He don't amount to a hill of beans. <laughs> That's not good is what you're saying. No, that would mean that he's probably like a shitbird, that term that you like to use. Ah. Now, what about over yonder, Dylan? Because yonder could be anywhere. Well, yeah, but... It could be a great distance or it could just be like a short distance. One place yonder is not is here where we are at this current moment. Like no matter where you are, you're here. Yonder can't be here. It'd be like you're here. And you look on a map, and yonder is basically everywhere the around surrounding, you. The surrounding, you know, the circumference, the diameter, wherever, all around of you. the entire earth. Because yonder could, like she said, Heather said, uh, yonder could be a mile down the road. It could be 100 miles down the road. So, I mean, that's just, you're going to have to it wait for more. It just means a distance. It just means a distance, and you're going to need more context clues to figure out exactly where over yonder is. Now, if someone is very upset, they might be described as a matter than a wet hen. Now, this one's uh, this has old uh, old meanings. Yeah, as well. now this is rooted it's, it's in very... some actually like interesting little piece of history. Yeah, so farmer, you, anyone has had chickens and knows when a chicken a hen gets broody. Now she starts hiding her eggs. You can't find them to recover the eggs, and she just gets a real attitude. She don't want you to touch her, mess with her. She'll do anything to raise a clutch of peeps. So it's like, you can do whatever you want to me, but you leave my kids out of this. (laughs) I just don't much care what the farmer does. So what farmers would do when they get a broody hen is they would actually dunk them in like a trough or something to kind of bring them out of it because they get almost in this state of like a fugue state. So they would literally dunk the hen in, in water to kind of bring snapper out of being broody so she'll quit messing up the egg regimen. So then she'll just be broody. She will, she'll go from broody to just being mad as hell. But then she's not happy. She's like Yosemite Sam. She is not Guns happy out. at all once she gets dug. So if you're madder than a wet hen, you're you're pretty angry. You're pissed. You are like in full rage mode. Yes. Like but, roid raging or something, <laughs> exactly, right? Exactly, yeah. Okay. Caddy Wampus. Uh, now I've heard various... Uh, um, various takes on this one as well i think this is where you're talking about the regional uh, or people coming into the area they bring their meanings for these similar words with them and different words so what's cattywampus to you well now i've always heard cattywampus be like, like you would use that to describe something that's like foobar like it's all fucked up or it's out of whack so if something's not right. Right. Like, hey, that feller built that barn and it looks like, look how cattywampus that door is hung. Like, you know, like he just doesn't, like somebody maybe doesn't quite know what they're doing. They fuck something up. I've heard a woebegone. Woebegone? I've heard that as well. Woebegone used in, for that same, uh, that, that looks woebegone. It's not right. Something about it's not right. It's wonky. <laughs> One of my favorite terms to, to describe this uh, cattywampus would be like janky. Janky? Yeah, actually, I, I use the term janky quite a bit, and I've had people look at me like, what is she talking about? So I took to my own personal Facebook, and I was like, does anybody else use the term janky? And I was amazed at like how many friends, and not just locally, but like all over the country, they're like, no, we use that word. Yeah, I think janky is a good one. Yeah. I think some I've... people even take it a step further and say jankity. And Ooh. It's really messed up. Damn. But cattywampus, yeah, it just means like out of whack. Like maybe you're feeling a little cattywampus today. And it's that dilapidated. Yeah. Yeah. What about the pot calling the kettle black? No, I think this is one that has na- national worldwide exposure even. It's been pop culture. And I think a lot of people knows what it means, it's but like it, hypocrisy. Or- yeah, it means you're being hypocritic. You're you are because obviously a pot and a kettle are both black, 
And so if you're you're well, this, traditionally, if we're talking about like cast iron, right? No, oh, definitely talking about cast iron cookware. Yes. And uh, so if you're the pot that's calling the kettle black, you are being a hypocrite, and you do the very thing that you're complaining about this other person doing. Now, this is one of these phrases that I've heard my entire life, and I've heard it put in different ways and different. It it, it can be modified from region to region, and that is. Pretty as a speckled pup in spring. Oh, okay. That means something is really beautiful. Now, see, what was interesting when we were looking at these, coming up and looking at these phrases and thinking some some of them we just, hey, what about this one you heard all your life? We definitely had two categories. We had ones we still use personally, and then we had one I would hear only an old timer say, right? Right. Don't you agree? And I think this is more in the old timers. My dad still says pretty as a speckled pup in the right. spring. Now, he says that, and I mean, in my brain, he's an old-timer, but he's really not. Well, yeah, but I'm saying he he's he's one, he's right there. He grew up hearing this constantly. Now, I've heard folks in, like, Georgia and South Carolina say pretty as a peach. Yeah. Because they're in peach country. But that can kind of, you know, like I said, it can be modified, I guess, depending on what part of Appalachia. But I've always enjoyed the speckled pup in spring because, let's face it, there's nothing cuter than a speckled pup. Well, just pups. Like a little little coon dog pup. Little yeah. Coon dog. Yeah. Okay. So cute. Yeah, it's a little cute. blue tick all speckled up. Oh. They're beautiful. A little plot. I know. What about a doohickey, Dylan? Do- now, I'm thinking that's going to be like a thingamajigger. It is. Okay. A whatchamacallit, a thingamajigger. A whatchamacallit. Yeah, it's it's a term for anything that you don't know, like, the official name of the item, or your brain's just not working. Like, if you're trying to pick up something, you can't think of what it's called, and you're like, give me that doohickey, or you see this doohickey here? Yeah, or you, you don't know the official, or you don't know what it's used for. You don't even know what it's for. It's just this strange thing. You have no idea what it's made for. What's the official use or the name? It but could be like a, a hook, a latch. And often those doohickeys are taken. And, and um, one thing about mountain culture is uh, making things work. We're very know? innovative people. Yeah, and so you'll take these doohickeys or these doodads and um, repurpose them for other purposes just because it works. It's true. So I have this great uncle, and he's very much a mountain man. And at some point, Dylan, I would love for us to go pay him a visit and interview him because he is so interesting. But he is someone who definitely still lives like old-timey ways. Yeah. And instead of just buying something like a little doohickey to help fix an item, he will figure out how to fix it by hand or take and, something else and apart he'll, he'll and... make like he'll make some way and it'll take him all day to fix it but he would do that rather than go spend like a dollar on a doohickey yeah 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 and i think that's a real important uh attribute of appalachian culture yeah my mom and i just find that so adorable because she'll go visit him and she'll be like oh he was working on and she she's like and i'd offered him that like i can run to my house and get you a latch for that but he'd be like, no, no. And she's like, he spent all day like in his little wood shop or whatever, making himself a little doohickey to keep his cabinet door closed or <laughs> whatever. So what about the front yard? Well, the front yard, that's not out back. You don't know what the front yard is? It's the front yard. Now, the front yard is the opposite of the backyard. Well, yeah, obviously. Right. So if you're going to go cut the grass, you might start with your front yard. <laughs> In case the gas crisis hits and you can't finish. Yeah, so go check out your front yard. He thinks the sun comes up to hear him crow. That would be someone conceited. Yeah, that's... themselves, braggadocious. So he's like just a little full of piss and vinegar rooster. Exactly. Strutting around, chest out. Yeah, making all this noise. Everybody needs to hear me. Oh, there's nothing like... Oh my God! Like you will little, be so mad with a rooster, egomaniac. If you have roosters, even multiple roosters, to get in the crow offs, and they get to where they want, they want to one up each other, so they start earlier and earlier, like hours before the sun comes up, crowing, and they're outside your bedroom window or something. You will be trying to murder that rooster. Now, before I met you some years ago, like maybe five, six, seven years ago, I moved into this apartment, and and my landlord had roosters 
And it was like a basement, like an in-law suite, like a basement apartment. So she had chickens and they were like free range. Like she just let them go wherever. And she had a couple roosters and they did this and it would be three in the morning, still dark as hell outside. And those roosters would start Oh and they don't stop. No, and it would be all day, and it, and it seemed like they would always want to do it on the weekends, like the the one day I might have off to sleep in a little late, and they would start their shit. Oh my god, have you fought and mad? Uh, I would be so upset. So if you're out there and you're thinking about getting chickens, getting chickens, a lot of people like to do chicken. It's great, the, but ur- get the urban homesteading nowadays. Yes, but you know what? You don't have to have a rooster unless you want your eggs fertilized and you want to have a clutch. A peeps, you don't need the rooster. Just get hens. That is my advice. Yeah, they can be obnoxious. Hens are cool. Roosters actually, can be I mean, some we, shit. We live in quote unquote town, <laughs> right? We live in town, but our one of our neighbors across the way has a chicken coop and has a rooster, and I hear that rooster crow all the time. Yup. And he must be confused because he crows all the live long day. That it's not hard for the internal clocks to get off. Now here's a good one, Dylan. That dog won't hunt. Oh, uh, okay. I love this one. That's a good one. I use it or a, a, a variation of this. I don't have a dog in this fight. Yep. Well, I don't know. Those might actually have different meanings, they, but that well, they do. That dog don't hunt means that's just not going to work. What you told me is bullshit, and or whatever. This is this is bullshit. The situation is messed up, and it's just not going to fly. Yeah, this right? just doesn't add up. It doesn't it add doesn't up. Make sense. Right. Yeah, that dog won't hunt. Because there's nothing like a dog that won't hunt running with your pack. What about a hissy fit? (laughs) A hissy fit and a conniption fit go hand in hand. Yeah, this is when someone's just lost it. It's like an adult temper tantrum. Yes, that's a good way of saying it. Yeah. Yeah, they're throwing a hissy fit. We've been seeing news reports of people throwing a hissy fit because there was the ransomware attack on that pipeline. And of course, we live in North Carolina. It was like directly impacted. So people have been like going full Thunderdome at the gas stations. I've seen people arguing uh, over. I've not seen physical, you know, hands being thrown yet, but I've seen some people pretty mad. If they think you're cutting in line, I'll be like, look, I'm just trying to get in the damn store and get some smokes, bud. Hissy fit. Yeah, they're throwing hissy fits. You know, interestingly enough, and on that, the group, the dark side hacker group that attacked or attacked the pipeline didn't mean for them to shut it down. They 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 infiltrated, sent a demand for money. The pipeline's like, fuck that. We're just gonna shut it down and clean you out whatever you've done to the computers, and that's what has since. So they've actually apologized, the hacker group, for it having gone this far. They never intended they for it. They did not mean for all these hissy <laughs> fits to be thrown across the South. I thought that was funny. My eyeballs is floating. Ah, that means you have to urinate. So, like, if you were drinking a couple of beers, pretty soon after, you would say, my eyeballs is floating. Yes, this one, that's one I still uh, I still use that myself. So that means you need to go take a little pee pee. You need to go take an extended pee pee. Highfalutin. Ah, yes. So when someone's highfalutin, it means that they think they're something else. They're fancy. They're fancy, and they um, might have an air that they think they're better than you. Like a wedding at the country club. That's highfalutin. <sighs> wow. Somebody drives a Mercedes. Maybe they're highfalutin. <laughs> We should we did we should have tracked down the uh, origins of coworker that. Coworker shows up with a new coach bag. Well, isn't she highfalutin? Who? Yeah, can't never could. Now that's one I've heard my entire life. Yeah, so I think that's self-explanatory. It's uh, basically quitters don't win, right? Quitters don't win. Yeah, wow. can't never could. Or uh, to quote Wayne Gretzky, like you're going to miss a hundred percent of the shots you don't take. Right? <laughs> wow, so can't never could. That's inspirational. Yeah, thanks, Wayne. What happens when you get too big for your britches? Oh yes, you're about to get um get your mouth mushed. You think so? Possibly. It was going to get a whooping. Yeah, because you're getting too big for your britches. You're acting like you're grown. And it's going to get you in trouble. Like my daughter lately has been acting too big for her britches. Oh, these damn kids. Yeah. It's like they don't even wear britches. Yeah. She's about to find out what happens with them britches. Well, it comes with consequences. It does. And see, I think that's what's lacking in this world today 
is consequent direct consequences for your action. Well, you can do anything that you want. You can do all that stuff, but you're going going to likely have consequences. But when the consequences come, then people are like, "Oh, well, this is just a cancel culture, or this is an attack." And it's like, no, you have to learn to accept responsibility for your actions, and there are always consequences. It's cause and effect, right? And I think that uh, I mean, me and you both are right there around forty. You're right. Just over 40. Don't tell people. Well, I'm saying, but I think we still got constant, uh, instant, instant karma for our actions when we were kids. Uh, it seems the way I felt like it was when I grew up. Well, it was. And I mean, part of that is probably because we did grow up in this area where parents are still like, I'm going to whoop your ass. Well, and it's um, <laughs> like that was still a thing in the 80s when we were little kids. We had con- and, and I think we and I'm not saying that that's what people should do, you know, with parenting. I mean, I'm not someone to lay hands on my children, even if sometimes I feel like my 15 year old needs some hands laid on her. I don't. But, you know, it's just this uh, idea that you were going to get punished if you did something. Yeah. And um, I thought for whatever reason, our generation started shielding our children from consequences. Yeah. And, and really, and I think that's what's helped lead to the atmosphere that we have nowadays. Well, it's true. When people get online, have the anonymity of being online and can talk crazy without um, having consequences. I work with guys who've been in the mill all their lives or, or third generation mill workers. Great. You're nothing wrong with that. But they are used to working in an environment where people care about their jobs and keeping it. And then I come from an environment in small construction and stuff like that where this guy – is he making 30 bucks an hour because he's fucking really good. At, Larry's a good carpenter. Because Larry's the best carpenter in the area. And Larry don't give a fuck. But Larry stays up all night eating pills and, and drinking beer, and Larry's crazy. So if you talk crazy or talk shit to Larry, he will fight you. Like, or Larry right, will just be like, fuck you, and he'll throw his shit down and he'll leave the job site. Yeah. Because Larry knows that there's like five or six other places he can go get a job making 30 bucks an hour because he's the shit. And Larry will have a job in the morning. Yeah. and Larry, But you will have to talk to Larry. You're going to have some kind of consequences of messing with Larry. Exactly. Instead of backbiting and acting like a bunch of little bitches. <laughs> oh, sorry. Are we getting, see, are we getting off on a tangent? No, it's okay. It's okay. This it's is what, what happens. Do. Yeah. Uh, as I'll get out, Ugh. like you could be, for example, like I'm as tired as I'll get out. I'm as hungry as I'll get out. It's I'll get out is like the fuck word of, uh, um, Southern phrases. You can literally use it in negatives and positives, nouns, adjectives. It I'll get out means, means like full in like a hundred percent, whether it's like I'm tired, I'm hungry. I couldn't be any more tired or hungry because I'm already tired as I'll get out. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and it's actually a modifier, like I said, because you can use it for a lot of different descriptions. Um, But it actually dates, that whole phrase dates back to like the 1840s. So that's how long that has been in effect here in the Appalachia area in the south. That's interesting. It is, right? Um, Road hard and put up wet. Now Now, this is is something I've heard used in a multiple ways this is a term a lot of people aren't familiar with it seems it's an equestrian term it's a term for your horses because if you ride your horse a long way or ride them very hard you need to gr- let cool them down groom them feed them and then put them away because it's not, it's improper to just go put them straight in a stable after they've been rode hard now, this can have multiple me- meanings, I think. It can mean you've had a rough day. It can mean you have a, had a rough day. Like, you could come in and say, man, I feel road, road hard and put up wet. Like, that just means you're tired, you're exhausted, you had a really trying day. And, uh, honestly, I've heard it used to describe... Um, people. People. Yeah, when I've seen, like... Somebody that looks... Like, for example... Um, I will look in the mirror and be like, oh my gosh, I look terrible. Like, I can't believe I let myself go, you know, whatever. A lot of people probably feel that way, especially after COVID. But then I will see someone maybe I went to high school with and I'll be like, she looks road hard and put away wet, put up wet. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. And then I'm like, damn, I look like a beauty queen. I feel better about myself because I've seen other people my exact age. Exactly. That look rough. Road hard. It means rough. I mean, it does. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It definitely mean rough. Plum. Now, this is something you could use in multiple ways. Plum. P L U M B. Plum. 
Okay, so like the plum. Okay, not the fruit. Not the fruit. Plumb. Plumb. Like plum crazy. Okay. Plum tired. All right. It just means like it's like a it's something extra. Like if you're plum tired, that don't mean that you're just like I'm feeling a little tired. That means you all in. I am tired as hell. I'm plum tired. Okay. It seems that like Appalachian people like to uh, have words that put emphasis on yeah, like an on adjective things. or something. Yeah, it's like I, I'm trying to let you know that I'm I'm a little bit more than just this thing. Yeah. Okay. If it had been a snake, it would have bit me. Oh, I use this one all the time. It, and that's appropriate for you to learn. And it means that it, it, when you're looking for something. Like your keys. Your keys, your, your wallet. wallet, or whatever, that shirt you were looking for, and it's it's right in front of you. It's like right there. Yeah, so Dylan's a, uh, adept at sitting in a looking, but he's not adept at just looking for stuff. Or seeing. Because he will say, do you know where my keys are? And I'm like, they're right on the table. See, they're right there. And Dylan will go spend two seconds looking, and, and now he's looking, but he's like, I don't see them, and they're right in front of him. Yeah, if it had been a snake, it would have bit me. Because you're just not much of like an investigator. Yeah, I'm not much of a seer. Or putting forth And then I start panicking, and then I think that the, this thing I'm looking for, especially wallet keys, something important like that, is just gone forever. So then I start looking in weird places, like places I would never put it, and I keep looking in those places again. That's no. That's when I know I'm down the rabbit hole, and I'm in trouble. And then Heather's just like, it was right there. It's like on the coffee well, table. Well, it reminds me of, I can't remember if it was last night or something. You were gonna you were making dinner, and you told me you couldn't find any shredded cheese. And I knew that was a damn lie, because I always buy shredded cheese at the grocery store. I felt like we had shredded I, cheese. I usually buy multiple bags, because I feel like we're some cheese-eating people in this house. We're cheesy. We love cheesy stuff. And you said, I couldn't find any cheese. And I said, did you even really look? And you were like, well, probably not. And then this morning, I opened that drawer. There was cheese. And there was like four bags of no, like shredded cheese. No, nah, that's a fucking lie. No, there no. really, there is. You're, another, I'm going to introduce you guys to another, or, or y'all to another Southern saying right now. That's a damn lie. And you told it. That's not true. Okay, because I looked in the drawers at least. Yeah, well, it's in there because I just saw it. You got other I done, cheese. I done synced it, Dylan. You, get, you got synced it. That's a plant. I didn't just see it. I synced it. That cheese is a plant, and I do not trust it. Now, here's one I'm unfamiliar with, um, and definitely a phrase I would say used by the quote-unquote old-timers because this is just not something I've heard very often or ever, but apparently is a common saying, and that's more than Carter's little... More than Carter's got little pills. Yeah, so I've heard old, and I mean old timers, say this before. You have? Yes. Okay. And that's the only reason I remember I was aware of this. Now, Carter's are liver pills. Yes. Is that right? Yes, and it was heavily, heavily advertised in the various mediums back in the day. For decades, like the snake oil sales, yeah, from sell like, like the Carter's little, little pills, yeah, little from pills. like the eighteen eighties through the nineteen forties. People grew up seeing this no different than us growing up seeing Coke or you know some of these other things all our lives, and so and and yeah, so to say for an old timer to say that means a lot of something. Okay. If it's more than Carter's got little pills, ain't got ain't got the good sense that God gave a goose. <laughs> or ain't got the good sense that God gave a rock. Yeah. I mean, I've heard that phrase used multiple times. And I think like that's self-explanatory. Yeah. So it just basically means someone doesn't have a lot of common sense. Common sense. Yeah. What is common it's sense? It's a national deficit. That is what it is. Well, you know, you say that I'm smart, but I don't have any common sense. Well, sometimes you don't, honey. Well, you, so you're saying that like 99.8% of the people would have acted differently in this situation than me. Yes. Because I don't have common or sense. if you're approaching a problem or you're trying to fix something or I don't know, I, I look at you and I'll be like, what is he doing? Because I feel like you go in this very like out there way round of getting back to just fixing it when there's like an easy, when I'm like, you could have just done this. And then you'll be like, oh. Okay. Well, and that's my brain. Well, honey, I know. And it and happens I, in our I, storytelling. Well, and I love you, and I I love all the things about you. And I've just come to realize that you just don't have a lot of common sense, and that's okay. 
I am the brains of this operation. And you're st- you're street smart. I keep you in check. Okay. And then you know you're like the you're the brawn to my brains. Yeah. Right. Well, see, it, and it comes and you across. You have a lot of book sense, and we can have like lengthy discussions about like politics or philosophy, all these important subjects. But when it comes to just like good old fashioned common sense. Not so much. Sometimes I just am not sure how you made it all these years. You know, some of our listeners have commented and be like, I don't sometimes, and I know I do this. I do it in nat- natural conversations with people. And they'll be like, they don't know what the hell I'm talking about. But but I bring it all the way around. And I, and I And I connect it back together. And they're like, oh, okay. He eventually now gets to a point. those other four steps and things he was talking about make sense because I see the connection. And, I, and that really is how my brain works. And I do apologize. Yeah, and I don't mean that as an insult, honey. But oh, you, I'm not insulted. But you know you don't have a lot of common sense. Well, that's okay, you know. what? Well, I'm uncommonly sensed. Uh, it's okay. Oh, I'm, oh, but I'm I do tough. question, like, how in the hell did you make it through life sometimes? Well, sometimes it's tough. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's a damn good thing you met me. Oh, yeah. What about close the door? You're letting all the good air out. Now, have I heard this? I've heard this as well. Yeah, and you better, I mean, uh, you better not let my mom have the air conditioners or anything on. You leave the door open. Now, I've heard that. When you've got the air conditioner running. Yeah. Okay, you have to leave the good air in the house. Yeah, and I think in old timers' minds, this may mean... um They've, they've dusted everything real good, and, and maybe it's kind of dusty and such outside around the house or cabin, whatever you want to call it. And, uh, yeah, you're just letting you're letting the good air out. Yeah, it could be you're letting the heat out because a lot of people have wood heat. Yep. It could be like you're letting the good air out because it's cold out there. It could mean um, because of the humidity that we get here in the south. Yeah. So even if your house is nice and cool, maybe you don't have the AC running, you don't want to leave the windows or the doors open because you're going to get that humidity. And a lot of the ways the older houses are designed, because even the house that we live in, um, it stays relatively cool. Dude, we can come in here and there is a no, there is a good five degree difference. Even if it's warm out, there's a good five degree difference and it's cooler in the house. It is. Yeah. So you don't want to let the good air out. No. Okay. Right. Um, sweating like a whore in church. Ha. Huh. It's a yes. very colorful, colorful, colorful phrase. And that is a classic. It's got to be in top five classic phrases. And, um, I think it's you pretty be straightforward. Sweating uncomfortably. Cause you're going to be uncomfortable because you're obviously this whore in church and you're of a, uh, according to the phrase, you're of low morals and stuff. And but we love sex workers, the pre- so we, we don't do. feel that way. We do. And every, hey, let's be honest. See, here's where hypocrisy comes in in some churches. Everybody loves sex workers. Everybody too. in there loves the whore. They okay. Love the the sex men worker. are not disparaging her. They're sneaking around, talking to her, giving her good, earned, hard money. Some of the women possibly may They're maybe. sitting and looking at her. They're sitting and looking. But obviously, it's, it's making some assumptions in this phrase. Right. But it really just means like you're sweating a lot. Now, my mother, she doesn't say that, but you know what my mom says, and I always think it's funny, and I don't ever hear anyone else say it, and I've had people say, like, what What does that mean? She'll say, I'm sweating bullets. Oh, I'm sweating bullets. I've heard that one. Yeah. Oh, my, yeah. My mom says that all the time. Now, and I wonder if uh, to colder than a witch's titty in a brass bra. I've heard that as well. Now, is that a Southern saying, you, you re- reckon? Probably. Yeah, and that just means really, really cold. Yeah. And as you could imagine, if a witch's titty was in a brass bra in the winter. You know what? I I am a witch, and I never wear a br- br- brass bra, but I just don't think these t- these titties could ever be cold. Oh, baby. They're just too big. Yeah, get them out. Let's have a come to Jesus meeting. Ha. Ah, yes. What, what does that mean if you want to have a come to Jesus meeting? That means you're about to lay it out for somebody, the situation, what you truly feel about it, and you're probably likely going to give them so, an ultimatum. This is going to be an important discussion. It's going to be an important. There's no jokes. It's not funny. This is a come to Jesus meeting. And I hear this used quite a bit, especially by the more country folk that I know. And it means you're about to have a serious discussion. And they're probably going to outline some choices for you. Like the next time my daughter gets too big for her britches, we are going to have us a serious come to Jesus meeting. <laughs> yeah, good luck with that. So what does it mean if you were describing someone, Dylan, and you said their cornbread ain't done in the middle? Oh, well, uh, there's many phrases or sayings for this. Um, it just means they're not. you don't think they're all there. They don't have a full deck. 
They're the elevator just, doesn't go to, to the top floor. Okay. They're not the sharpest knife in the drawer. Not the brightest bulb in the tannin bed. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I've heard that one before. <laughs> Uh, if somebody says, hey, holler at me later, what does that mean? Well, that means give me a call. Give me a call. Yeah. Hit me up. Yeah. Pop and, uh, in my DMs. Pop in my DMs. Holla. You know, hit me up. Yeah, you nailed it. If you can't run with the big dog, stay on the porch. Uh, that means, well, um, gosh, this, 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 this phrase has big meanings, don't you think? Yeah. It means if you're if you can't perform, if you can't keep up at a certain level doing any task, if or you cannot elevate your mind to a thinking level, yeah, you need to just stay on the porch. Yes, because um, yeah, old lazy dog on the porch is not going to get into any trouble. But if he gets out there with the big dogs, we're high functioning here. He's going to be in trouble. My druthers. Well, I, if I had my druthers, I would do this. Does that mean my preference? It does. I, I would rather. Okay, see, this is a rather old one, and I'm, I'm not familiar with my that. My druthers. Okay. It would mean, like, if I had my druthers, you would find the cheese in the drawer, but you didn't, so that's okay. I still don't think there's cheese in the drawer unless you went and got new cheese. Show you. I'm going to look at the date, and I'm going to search. And I'm going to tell you right now, I'm searching the trash can for a fucking receipt because you were mysteriously gone this morning when I got up. I know you text me, like, where are you? And I was like, don't worry, the divorce papers will come to you soon. Yeah, and I told you I wasn't going to sign You just them. wrote back and we're like, no. <laughs> yeah, not happening. You're going to have to See, wait me of, out. I'm so full of shit. You know, that's not even true. You can't even believe anything I say. We're going to get to the bottom of this cheese day. What about a month of Sundays? Like, if I haven't seen you in a month of Sundays, Dylan, what does that mean? That means a very long time. It's a long time. So, if, yeah, if you think about it. That'd be like 30 Sundays. 30 Sundays. That'd be quite, that'd be months. So, I haven't seen you for three years almost. A month of Sundays. What if somebody is full as a tick? That's not three years, honey. There's four Sundays every month. Yeah, I know. I don't know. Yeah, I'm going to stop you right there. Well, I can't do math. Yeah, but it's just a month. Let's we, say it's months. We all know that. It's okay. She's cute. She's cute. Hey, I, I can't. Her. I have a right brain. I can't do math. What, what happens if you're full as a tick? That means you're about to bust. You're full up to here. You ever have people do that? I'm full up to here. Well, yeah, but you're full of what? And they got their... Got their hand, their hand right there at their neck. Does that just mean you you had too much food? Yeah, you've, you've eaten too much. Sunday dinner, you've gorged yourself. Yep. You went to the Golden Corral and you took full advantage of the eight ninety nine buffet. Sun Sunday dinner at Big Mama's house after church or whatever. Granny made chicken and dumplings. You had three apple plates. Pie, there's whatever. Yeah, you're full as a tick. Oh my gosh. I'd like to eat like that. Some papa's probably going to fall asleep in his chair. <laughs> yes. Right? Men falling out left and right. Oh, my God. Yeah. Yep. Everybody, there's not a whole lot of talking or arguing going on. It's just real calm. Yeah. Because you're full as a tick. You're full as a tick. What if you're hanging in there like hair on a biscuit? I mean, you're giving it all you got, right? Yeah. Yeah. Because hair will hang on a biscuit like nobody's business. Yeah, no, yeah, you can make it through all kinds of stuff. The, the oven, everything, the bowl, every, the, the hair still on that damn biscuit. What if somebody's grinning like a possum? <laughs> well, it's a shit eating grin. A shit eating grin. Yeah, I've always heard that one. Right? Like they are they are content with themselves. All teeth. I saw I saw I saw him down there, and he was grinning like a possum. <laughs> All right. Heavens to Betsy. Now, what's this mean? What's heavens to Betsy mean? Well, Is it like an exclamation? Kind of. I mean, I've heard it used in a lot of different ways. Like if, you know, like somebody might be like, well, heavens to Betsy. And it's like just a, you know, an excited statement. A, okay. Like a declaration of some kind. Okay. It can mean like you're irritated maybe or just like, oh, Wow. A sign of frustration, it maybe? Could, it could be, yeah. I, I think it's pe something people would use in place of curse words. Now, what happens when you go visit Granny and she says, give me some sugar? Oh, she wants a kiss. Granny wants, yeah. Granny wants some sugar. That means you give Granny a kiss. <laughs> give me some sugar. Give me some sugar. Okay, I like that one. Yeah. Have people said they want to give you some sugar before? Well, yeah. I mean, and it's exactly like you said. It's, it's the old ladies at church dinner or, you know, somebody's house or, you know, you always go to your granny's house, has that smell. 
And it's not a bad smell. It just smells like granny. Yeah. You know, a mixture of like being gay and the the, the butterscotch candy and, and the like cornbread on the cornbread yeah. and all that stuff. It's like, well, my, my, my well, because I, I did have a granny and I had a mamma and then I had two nanas. And oh, man. I have to say, like, it's just a, like a really comforting. Yes. You know, like a specific home. Sp- smell at my granny. It's just a real comforting smell. I don't know where we got with the smell, but sugar. Give me some sugar. Um, I've also heard the phrase, I'm going to sugar you up. Oh, yeah? Like, my aunt says this to my son. She'll be like, I'm going to sugar you up. And it just means she's going to, like, kiss him. Okay. Yeah. All right. Sugar Sugar and kisses. I'm going to sugar you up, boy. Uh, Catty corner. That that can mean something's, like, set, like, in a diagonal. Yeah. Like, if you were going to turn your couch... Well, I always think of it as arranging like something across the corner, kind of, or in the corner. It's kind of off kilter. It's not dead on. Yeah, catty corner. Man, we are like really bringing it. Like this is a lengthy episode, but there's just so many <sighs> cool phrases. We could probably make this like a t-shirt. There's a lot, you know, and I hope that other people will, um, it doesn't matter where you live, in what country, in where you live in America, we want to hear some phrases back. Oh, we would love to. Yes, Let's back here. Give them a few more, Dylan, and okay. then we might revisit this later because it is getting, uh, we're getting a little long here. Little, hey, are we getting a little long in the tooth? We are. Hey. Uh, ragamuffin. Oh, I'm not, I'm not sure I'm, is that raggedy? Yeah, I mean, okay. someone's dirty, like, you know, the, those, uh, I'm going to throw a name out there. Like those Johnson kids are little ragamuffins. It yeah. Means, you know, they're the ones that got the, they're a little stringy headed, always got the dirty snotty face. Might not have shoes. Little ragamuffin kids. Raggedy. Or like, they look like a ragamuffin. Okay. Uh, here's another one. What happens if you're tore up? Oh, tore it's up. Tore up. Like you're not torn up. You're tore up with an E. Oh, now this isn't going to be just like drunk or something, is it? it? Could, well, just anything's broken. It's tore up. Oh, okay. Right? Okay. Slow as molasses. Yeah, straightforward. Dylan can be slow as molasses sometimes. Well, I think this would actually be um, um, saying the extraction of the molasses out of the tree. It's like a very lengthy very, yes. process. Yes. Yeah. And uh, if you're pouring molasses, sometimes it can be a... Well, it's true. It can be slow like honey. It's right? true. Sit a spell. I just, you know, make yourself comfortable. Have you a know, sit. Have a conversation. We might want to catch up. Yeah, a spell. I mean, that could be a few minutes. That could be a couple hours. Just sit a spell. Welcome. welcome. Sit a spell. Yes. Cotton pick and minute. <laughs> now, I actually took the time to look this up, Dylan, and they say the average time to pick cotton would be like one minute and 13 seconds. So if someone says, you wait a cotton pick and minute. So are we talking clear one cotton bush? I, I suppose so, yeah. Okay. Okay. Damn. So uh, if damn. somebody tells you, you just wait a cotton picking minute, they want you to just... Oh, a little bit longer than an actual minute. Take take a, take a second. Oh, okay. We're going to have, have a little piece of time here. Okay. How's your mama, Nim? <laughs> and Nim can be anybody. It means like the whole family. Yes, it can be one person. It can be thirty people. It could be your mama and your daddy. It could be your mom and her sisters. It could be like the whole family. You know that comes across. How's in, your mama, Nim? In casual conversation, I don't know if it's just a Southern thing, but it's just it's polite to How ask. How is everyone about everyone? To inquire, How or if everyone? you heard someone's, uh, and I'm sure this isn't just the South. But if you heard someone's mom was sick through other people, you know, and, and then you ask them, take just a minute and, and have a very superficial conversation. So it's a small talk. That's one thing I think we do yep. pretty good. And so I'm a master of small talk. You are. Yeah, I am. See, I'm not a good, I'm not good at I'm small talk. I'm great at small talk. I'm awkward small talk. I remember talkers. stuff, even though I can't remember anything else in my life, all the parts that I need to function I can remember when someone tells me about an issue they had in their family or something, and I have a big ear, as they say, and people will unload their personal deep, dark secrets on me when they barely know me. 
And uh, I remember those things, and I will follow up when I see that person again. Hey, how are you doing? You Is are everything a okay? Great small talker. Yeah, you really are great at it. And I'm not. I am. I'm not a good small talker, and I know this, so this is definitely one of my shortcomings where you have no common sense. I am very awkward socially with people. Right. So I might say, how's your mom and them? Because I don't know what else to fucking say to you. <laughs> okay. That's like, right. Because once I ask how you doing, then I'm just like, wow, the weather's nice. Uh, yeah, yeah. You're, you're done with this. Did you know that Ted Bundy was a Virgo? I mean, I don't know. I don't know how to talk to people. Okay. A gizzard. Just a gizzard? If somebody talks about a gizzard, that can mean the heart, the throat. Okay. Like, man, I've, I've had got, got a pain in my gizzard. It could mean that maybe they're having a chest pain. <laughs> okay. Fair to Midland. That means you're doing okay. It means so, like if so. I said, Dylan, how you doing today? And you said, ah, fair to Midland. Okay. That, mean you, that means you're doing okay. So I feel like that's a really old phrase. Yeah. I have uh, one of my friends, he often, when I will inquire, how you doing? You know, because he's my old buddy and he'll say, I'm fair to Midland. So you're doing so, so. Yeah, it means he's doing all right. He's hanging in there. Uh, Clod hopper. Now I've heard this term. My mama uses this term. My daddy uses it. I've, people have described things. They've described me using this term. So a clod hopper is like some sort of big clunky boot or shoe. Yeah. Something that's probably going to make a lot of noise when you're clunking around. Yep. So like I've heard my whole life, like my dad will be like, there's Heather wearing them clod hoppers. But yeah. I'm wearing like a pair of like Doc Martens or I'm wearing like a big clunky pair of goth boots or something. Now I'm going to guess this is a, a farm reference. Yes, it is. Of, of, from being in the fields and where you'd actually have a big clods of dirt and stuff where um, it's been turned. Yeah. So this is an old, old meaning. Like you got on your brogans. Yeah. It's a big old pair of clod hoppers. Uh, if somebody tells you, go get me a switch, what does that mean? Oh, it means uh, you're likely you're about to get your ass busted. You're about to get a whooping. Yeah. A whooping. And here's the thing. You better bring a good, good usable switch back. Because if you try to go for that little one, and we've said this before, and we'll say it again, they, your granny would go out there and get half the damn bush and beat your ass with yeah, it. Yeah, well, the thing is, and this is what I always learned as a kid, is that if you came back with like a stick... Like kind of a bigger stick, it hurt much less than the little skinny no switch. See, so, yeah, you're describing some stick on the ground dried out. Yeah, no, they want a fresh switch. No, they want a and they're a little skinny off thing. The bush, and it'll tear your ass. And up. that some bitch is gonna wrap around your leg like G Indiana Jones's whip. I gonna leave a whelp <laughs> of some kind. <laughs> yeah, a whelp. Somebody says, "Quit your belly aching." What does that mean? I uh, just quit complaining. Stop complaining. Give it a rest. All right. What if somebody's raising cane? Oh, they're raising hell. What about causing if, a scene? What about if we decide to go loafing or loafering this weekend? Well, I felt like we went loafering the other day. We did. We went uh, had no destination in mind. Ended up at the Fontana Dam because I love to see uh, engineering marvels. He does, and I think that's a marvel. And uh, then we found this beautiful. I mean. You know, you know what's fun about loafering? You don't have the schedule. You don't know what you're going to do, where you might eat at and stuff like that. And then we found this beautiful dock that is just for the public right to use. Right on the lake. Right on the deepest. This is the deepest part of this huge, long, thin lake, uh, Fontana Lake, that stretches for miles and miles. And it was right nestled in mountains. So I just got to like. We was sitting. I just got to chill on this dock. And it was, I mean, you couldn't, sun. you couldn't, it was beautiful. About to, about to fall out there taking a nap because I was so relaxed. It was picturesque. Now, if you're loafing, some people also might, while they're loafing, you might be doing some piddling. Yeah. Just wasting time. You're just wasting time. I'm just piddling around. Just piddling. means I have, I'm not really doing much of anything. Yeah. I'm just piddling. Yes. I can't wait till I'm loafing or loafering most of my week you can't wait till you're retired yeah and you're just gonna loaf and piddle like a motherfucker i'm yeah. gonna make you a shirt that says piddling like a motherfucker <laughs> okay uh washateria have you heard that before no or some people might say a oh, washateria it's basically like a self-service laundry like a laundromat oh but i'm gonna take my clothes down to the washateria wow or they might be doing some washing at the washateria depending on where you're from yeah that's a pretty old 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 phrase there, I'm going to guess. A varmint, of course. That's like a critter. Probably like a rodent. A critter, rodent, a possum, coon. Sometimes I'm feeling a little bit ornery. I'm irritable. Uh, what if it's near about or pert near? 
Oh, that means close, like right? Like it's near 5 o'clock. Yeah, so yeah, right. Yeah, that means it's it almost. pretty close. It's almost that time. Lickety split. Uh, you need to move quickly. Move quickly. Let's do it. Hunky dory. I'm feeling great. Yeah, well, since you're feeling so hunky dory, I think it's time we got to wrap up this episode. Yeah, this has been fun. And and if I hope I'm not mistaken, but didn't Phyllis th- through uh, Phyllis our lovely uh, Discord friends, yes. the patron of the show. We love Phyllis. She actually suggested this offbeat topic. And she I said, love that she did. Yeah. She said it would be fun. This and she fun. was right. It was fun. And we hope that maybe we uh, enlighten some people. And, and you know, uh, and as to what the hell us Southerners are talking about. Maybe if you're out loafing and you end up in the South or in the mountains, this will help you interpret what some of the locals are saying yeah and i'm sure that you can enlighten us as well so if you want to hit us up at mountain murders podcast at gmail.com with some of your local phrases no matter where in the world you are we would love that i would like to talk about it like what some of our australian listeners like maybe some of the phrases you've grown up with definitely australia uk up in new england or you're like out in cali Japan, Philippines, I see you. Yeah, let us know uh, some of your local co- like colloquialism. That's a big word. All right, guys. Thanks for tuning in. And, of course, we'll be back on Sunday. We love you.